welcome to a very special edition of Cool Cars, Interesting People. Today, the cool car just happens to be the boss. It is from the Trax Coach Lines that we have from Trax. This is Lonnie Bartell, and uh, we're here because we have a very special guest today by the name of Toby Boulay, and he's very passionate about getting seat belts on buses for very obvious reasons. Talk about Trax and how significant this is for you guys to have lap belts, seat belts on all of your buses. Yeah, well, thank you for having me. Uh, it is it is very important to Trax. We've uh, ran an initiative since uh, 2011 to every coach we purchase comes with seat belts and it's the three-point seat belt system that we uh, we currently operate. Uh, it's, it is a tough sell here in, in, uh, in, in Alberta for sure because uh, there's a lot of competition. Um, there is a lot of buses out there that don't have seat belts and we do currently have a couple as well, but uh, what we're doing to get away from all this is just buying buses with seat belts and working with customers that they feel that it's important to have seat belts in their buses. We deal with a lot of hockey clubs in Edmonton, Calgary, Medicine Hat and Lethbridge that feel it is important to have seat belts and that's what we currently are pushing as a, as a bus company. And uh, I understand legislation is, is forthcoming as well. Yes, it is. Le legislation, if I'm correct, will be about two years away, but uh, it is coming. It's, uh, it's big in the United States and it's definitely coming to Canada. What do you think the reason is that people have not embraced the seatbelts in buses so far? Is it a cost factor? Yeah, 100% it's a cost factor. It, uh, it, it brings the, the bus costs up significantly, putting uh, seatbelts into the motor coaches, but uh, you know what, it, eventually the cost factor needs to just go away because it's important that uh, the children are wearing and the adults are wearing seatbelts in these buses because it'll, it'll mitigate the risk, definitely. Talk about your bus, the one that we've got here and the one we're gonna go for a little ride. Can I, am, I, am I driving? No, <laughs> no, no. no. <laughs> okay. Um, it's a 2017 Prevo H345. Um, they're top of the line bus made out of uh, Quebec, actually, here in Canada. So, who else to buy buses from but another Canadian? Um, they definitely, uh, they're made to, to work in our climates, definitely. Um, our motor coaches, they're all, they all have seat belts. Um, they all have uh, GPS. We run electronic logging, and that's also to mitigate any risk because we are on the highway a lot and uh, there are human errors and to get away from the paper logs and all that stuff. Majority of our coaches also, we operate with uh, drive cameras and stuff. So that, uh, that gives us a view of uh, if there were to be an incident, we get the first, the bird's eye view on the incident. So Trax is all on board on something called Buckle Up Broncos. Uh, talk about what that is, uh, the initiative is, and, and how important it is for you to be on board. Well, the, the initiative of Buckle Up Broncos is to bring the awareness to people using motor coach transportation to be using seatbelts and uh, not just having them on the coach, but actually using the seatbelt, clipping them in, and uh, just following by the safety rules of that, uh, of that seatbelt. If the seatbelt's on the bus, it, it obviously should be law that they wear them. Um, and it, it is important, uh, I think, with the Broncos that uh, this, this campaign goes through uh, very heavily because uh, it, it keeps the people put in the seat. There's a reason that when you're on an airplane, that when, you're, when they're flying, that you're, you're to buckle up your uh, seat belt even if you're not moving around or if the plane's seat belt light is off because there is things that happen. You do hit the brakes. Uh, it just keeps people safer. And uh, from seat belts are there to, to mitigate the, any kind of uh, being thrown forward and uh, keep you in your seat so you don't become a projectile in case of an incident. Yeah. And you guys are all on board of Buckle Up Broncos. Oh, 100%. We're all on board 100% Buckle Up Broncos. Well, let's buckle up and let's go find Toby Boulay. Plus, nice to Tony, see you. How you doing, my friend? Very good. Very Hope good. Everything's going fine. Not too bad. 
Hey, Mark. Toby, nice to see you. You bet. I got a bus for you. Let's go. This is the coolest car we've ever had. Well, I'm glad. <laughs> Come on in. Thanks, Mark. This is awesome. Love the ride. Thanks, Les. Thanks, Trax. <laughs> All right. Let's get these, these things on. We got it. Isn't this amazing? These, uh, you know, it's just so easy to put these on in a bus. It's very easy to put these on in a bus. <laughs> it's, just, it's, it's, just, it's just not, there, I feel it's, good. It seems so easy. It is, yeah. So how are you, how are you? I guess you get that, asked that a whole lot, don't you? We get asked, <laughs> we get asked that more than you can imagine. Yes. And I had a teacher, a retired teacher email me about a month ago, and she said, I hope things are softening around the edges. And how do you, how do you respond to that? Well, things are softening around the edges. Yeah, yeah. There's things pop up every day that we, we've always said that if Logan had been killed in a car accident by himself and it wasn't his fault, there would have been a funeral at McKillop Church for five, 600 people yeah. and we'd be on our way doing what we do now and working and grieving. But yeah. because of the national scope of the tragedy and the international flavor that's gone out there, all 29 families are being put, put in situations that we're not trained to be in. Right, right. And Maybe I'm a little bit more of that because I've been a little bit more in the public eye. Yeah, yeah. I, what, I don't know. I don't know how to ask this. And how, how do you get thrown into the public eye like that in such a massive scope and then deal with it? I, I don't, you, you need, you need family, you need support, you need friends. And what, what do you, what, well, how do you deal with that? We can, so you keep getting told you're so strong. And, really, and one of the moms, she just said, <clears throat> We never asked for this. No. So no. you do what you have to do. And it's just a matter of doing what you have to do. And so right. we have friends, we have family, we have colleagues at work. Yeah. And they're all working hard on our behalf yeah. and making sure that things happen in a positive way. And some people are protective, some people aren't. And that's fine because you have to let the horses run sometime. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's been good. We have a lot of family and friends and colleagues and people like tracks that have just brought the bus yeah. down. Les yeah. and Lonnie here just yeah. brought the bus from Calgary down here. and. Helping us out and make a good, yeah. great show. Let me ask you this question, because you're, you've been in this situation. What, what is it that you wish people, how, how you would like people to react to you? Because I know for me, it's, I, I, I get freaked out and say, I, I don't know if I should go up to you. I should say, I'm sorry. I should just stay away. I should hide. What, what is the best thing to do in a situation like this? I think the best thing for me and the other family seem to be thinking the same way is that we just want to be acknowledged. Like, yeah. how are you doing? I'm, yeah. s I'm sorry for the loss of your son or in Dana Brown's case, your daughter yeah. or your husband. Yeah. And just acknowledge that it happened. Yeah. We're, I still go shopping at, I shop at Safeway and Savon and people look at you and they know who you are and they kind of look at you and they go with their cart the other way. It's like, no, no, just come up. And I've had yeah. complete strangers come up and acknowledge me. Yeah. And I thank them. I say, thanks for acknowledging yeah. myself and my family and what happened. Yeah. Right. And just acknowledge and so yeah. people can... And the other one that we really li that we like, and I know all the other families like, is use the name like say Logan. Like Logan's yeah. not gone; he's right. just not with us today. Right. Yeah. So, so, if we don't speak his name, then he just remains frozen in time. And he, I guess he's frozen in time. But by speaking Logan's name and bringing him into the conversation, then there's a level of remembrance. Because yeah. He's not the center of the conversation, but it's like, hey. Yeah. So. And you know, it's well documented how he decided he was going to be an organ donor. How, how unbelievable has that been for you? Oh, it's been incredible because Logan was incredible and he made a decision based upon what Rick Suggett did, his fitness trainer at the university, Rick passed away the yeah. brain aneurysm last year. I'll just go over it real quick. Yeah. And then Logan in the summertime last August, we're sitting on the deck like him and I always did and he goes, I'm going to donate my organs because Rick did. I go, that's awesome. <laughs> You're going to be 80 years old and nobody <laughs> yeah, wants them. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I made a joke of it and deflected it, but then he said, no, I'm going to do that. I said, that's awesome. Yeah. And then he said he's, he's going to sign his donor card when he's 21. Is it? And, and then Alberta, that for us, for me, that meant signing your Alberta health care card. Yeah. Because re registering for organ donation is, you know, Bernie, my wife and I have done that now, but we didn't do it before. We just signed our health care card. Yeah. Don't really pay attention. So Logan signed his health care card when he turned 21, and he passed away in the crash on April 7th, it crashed April 6th, and then there's lots of pressure for you, what's going on, what's going on? So I, we just told them. Yeah. And my wife, when we, when you go in that little room, that little room you get called into, like you see in the TV shows, 
Bernie offered Logan's organs before they asked, and they were, the doctors were just shocked. They were surprised, right. and they just looked at us like, you're not serious. Yeah. The Logan Boulay effect, talk about it. The Logan Boulay effect is awesome. And when he made those decisions, we didn't know that it was going to be as a massive national response that it was. In international, we've had people from Australia, New Zealand, England, Facebook message us that they've signed up to be organ donors, and that's huge. And at the very beginning, Bernie and I said, we don't want this. We just, if it's a silver medal, then we'll take the silver medal. But we want Logan back. Yeah. Now we realize that it's, it's not in our control and that so many people have signed up and continue to sign up to be organ donors. Wow. We get emails and messages daily. That's Text Twitter. It's daily that people are signing up and they go back to Logan. So the people in the transplant world, they see Logan as a hero. Mm -hmm. And I don't know about that. We had one person... An interviewer trying to connect Logan to Terry Fox, and my wife and I both just said he's not Terry Fox. He's not the same. Yeah. But yeah, do people ever, people that that are waiting for transplants or that receive transplants they see Logan as Terry Fox? I don't see that. Yeah, but a hero it's still. That's still what, a hero. That's what people are telling us, and yeah. so we have to believe it, I guess. What you know, as this was all unfolding, and I, I was watching uh, you know all of the the hockey games and and. The response from the hockey community on all levels is just, I, I found myself just getting so emotional about when when the NHL, like when the Winnipeg got around, you know, center ice yeah. and just a tribute to that. It's, what, what can you say about the hockey community itself? I think the hockey community is amazing. I think any sport community, no matter what sport it is, is amazing. We're immersed in a hockey community in North America and Canada, yeah. Yeah. and they have stepped up, not stepped up, they've been there all along. They just they didn't step up, they've always been there for everybody. Yeah. And they've supported the, the families, all 29 families, as best as they possibly can. In Humboldt, in the art gallery, they have their rotating m museum, and there's like 4,500 artifacts. We've gone through it twice. Mm -hmm. And over half the artifacts are hockey teams from Pee Wee, Tiny Might, Mighty Might, or whatever you call it, novice, yeah. pictures of them, signing cards, Autographing this, signing banners, sending things in—it just never stops. And I guess yeah. they don't want to forget, and we don't want—we don't want the hockey team to forget. Yeah, yeah. The the number twenty-seven you got from uh, Chicago Blackhawks—is that correct? Um, no, they that, what happened? Not Chicago Blackhawks. From where? Jonathan Taze and the owner of the, of the Winnipeg Jets—they came out to Humboldt and they presented. Oh, the, they did. They presented the, both the Chicago and the Broncos and the Jets jerseys to the Broncos. The Broncos kept them because right. so much was coming in, so it took a while. And then they let the families decide which ones you wanted. Right. So we, we got number twenty-seven Winnipeg. There is no twenty-seven Chicago on the team this year. So we got number twenty-seven. Our other choice was Brent Seabrook's number because Logan oh. has an autograph Brent Seabrook stick. Oh really? Brent Seabrook played for the Hurricanes. Of course. That yes. was our second choice, but yeah. that was gobbled up because that number was one of the boys wore that number. Yeah. So, yeah. but nobody Logan wore twenty-seven, and we got twenty-seven. Right. Pretty cool. Cool. Just changing changing it up a little bit. How did you how did you ever get to Lethbridge? Where, what was your route to get to get to Lethbridge? Route to get to Lethbridge. Yeah. Well, you come on Highway Two. <laughs> oh, the route to get to Lethbridge was uh, I went to college here years ago to be a first year carpenter. Did that, liked Lethbridge, and then went back to work. And then the Alberta economy fell apart in like eighty two, yeah, eighty three, something like that. And so then I decided I wanted to be a school teacher, and I applied at a variety of universities, got accepted to all of them. Wow. And then I decided to go to Lethbridge because I didn't really know anybody. So. <laughs> Lethbridge was it. So I came to Lethbridge and met some people and had lots and started playing rugby and met my wife, my future wife, the second semester in drama class. I was a better actor. You, what? You did drama? Do Oklahoma. Let's go. I don't, oh. know, I, I don't know that one. <laughs> but anyway, I wasn't very good. But then, then the rest of the day we got married and we raised our family in Lethbridge. And what, what is, how important is Lethbridge to you right now? Lethbridge is, well, it's always been very important. It's our community. And yeah. The community of Lethbridge is really circled around the Boulets in this tragedy. We're the only family from south of Calgary. Right. We're it, south of Airdrie. And so it's easy to forget about us, but it's for other people, but it's not for our community. Everywhere we go, people we talk to, we're recognized, and they ask us to do things, and they're at the same time, there's lots of respect to allow us space. Yeah. The donations for like the Kids Sport Fund was Oh, off the off the charts. Yeah, wanted to ask about that. How did uh, how did that money come about? Well, we were driving home from Saskatoon, and we we're trying to figure out what to do. Well, Bernie's brother Kevin was driving, and I said, "Let's do kids sport. We don't have to vet." Then Bernie goes, "What do you mean?" I said, "We don't have to decide 
who gets money. Let the kids sport volunteers decide that. Logan was a multi-sport athlete, played six or seven sports. Right? We forgot he did curling and ring, uh, ring, uh, gymnastics and ringette also. So put some of the seven sports he played. And uh, so we did kid sport. And then we put that out as on his, in his funeral in lieu of flowers. Don't please donate to kid sport. And from that, it, I was hoping to get, you know, $25,000. Then when it got close to $50,000, well, then I was hoping we'd get 50000 And then the Italian Open, they had that uh, Italian Open dinner. And Rocco Siriano and uh, Tony Rose approached us and said, we'd like to get a, a Logan Boulay jersey to auction. I said, well, you're not going to get a Logan Boulay jersey because we're not getting one for you. Well, we might be able to get your Broncos. We got him a Bronco game-worn jersey. There was two left in circulation. We got one of the two, stripped the name off, put a boule packed up with Logan Boulay, and put the assistant letter on there and everything. And then we explained it very clearly at the dinner. Uh, Tony Rose and Rocco Soriano, they're, you know, they wanted to get maybe 10000 like you buy for 3000 Yep. And then you, you send it back in, and I bid. Right. So, And lo and behold, Brian McDonald paid $20,000 for it. Oh, my God. Unbelievable. And he, then when he bought it... He then turned around and said, this jersey will be hanging in my suite at the end max for one year. I'm bringing it back next year. We're going to auction it off again. All, and all on, the go to on the condition that it goes every year, that it gets auctioned back wow. for kids sport. Fantastic. So I've already had two business owners come up and say, we're going to bid together more than Brian paid. <laughs> wow. Next year. Wow. Because they want to, the, the, people want to get the $27,000 for that jersey. Yeah. And then when that happens, maybe we're done. And all that money goes, every penny goes to kids sport. What was the final total this year? Well, it's not over yet, but the but total we had was 72000 and then we had another donation for a couple thousand. Wow. So well, we're over 75000 now. So that'll get you 50 sticks, right? <laughs> well, not quite. <laughs> it don't. I, I, th I think about when I was playing hockey, yeah. you know, I'd get my $7 Sherwood from Burton Max and it would yeah. last me the whole year. But, but now... <laughs> this goes to every sport. We didn't yeah. just single out hockey. That's we're great. adamant that it goes... It doesn't matter if you're cheerleading or curling or badminton or hockey or whatever it is, yeah. football, you want to play sports, Kid Sports pays half your fees up to maximum $300. So we're doing $10,000 a year is being taken out of the fund. So if the jersey keeps selling, we have other fundraisers going wow. on. Wow, amazing. We're going to try to build it up to $150,000, $170,000, and then it'll just sit there and run its course. Wow. And when it's done in 15, 20 years, then it's done. Nice. How did you get in? Again, we're changing gears a little bit, but I, how did you get into the rugby side of things? You, you've been coaching uh, uh, women's rugby for a long time, national champions, uh, unbelievable. Uh, what the, what the, where, did, where did that come from? I played rugby just out of high school in Oles yeah. for the Red Deer Titans. Moved to Lethbridge, played rugby for the rugby club. Yeah. Helped start their University of Lethbridge Trolls with yeah. Jim Rosaki, Neil Longe, and there's a name for you, yeah. and uh, Quinn Skelton. And we started the, the Trolls and then got married and. Yep. I like rugby, so I play rugby, <laughs> yep. coach rugby at Churchill. My son played there. My daughter played there. Mirko played for four years. Logan played for four years. Logan won. Mirko won the first provincial championship for the Griffins. And she was on that team. Not Mirko, when the team won. Yep. And then Logan was on the team when they won two uh, provincial championships. And Logan's yep. a heck of a rugby player. Mirko was real good. And Logan was, because he's so fit and strong and he's six foot two, he yep. could play. Yeah. And Mirko could play too, but she's not six foot two. <laughs> <laughs> But that was cool to, to go. Was it undefeated? There were, it was, well, well, championships back to back at U of L with women. Was yeah. it back to back to back? Wasn't it? They went three time national three champs. Wow. I'm the manager. Neil Longer was Longer yeah. was a coach. I was a yeah. manager. Yeah. We went three in a row. I think we outscored the opposition in those three years, yeah. something like six hundred and something to forty seven. Some <laughs> yeah, ridiculous yeah, number. <laughs> Unbelievable. Ridiculous number. <laughs> well, didn't you also uh, take the kids to uh, like? Overseas or to Australia or to yeah yeah didn't you do that we I like to tour I think yeah. I think international touring for youth sports gives a, gives students a chance to go see the world with a purpose not just mm -hmm. talking to waiters and servers and people at hotels you're yeah. actually so we've done international rugby tours to um, Scotland Portugal. New Zealand. New Zealand. Scot no, that's, that's where that's where rugby is. Really yeah. rugby, isn't it? I'm not done yet. Scotland yeah. again, <laughs> then Argentina, and then oh. we went back. Then we went to Wales, oh. then to England, and then back to New Zealand. Oh, jeez. And then I, I did a ringette tour for Mariko with her ringette team. We went to Finland, and then when Logan was playing summer hockey, spring hockey, we did a tour with, another, with a company. So Logan got to go to Germany, Finland, and Sweden play hockey, too. Wow. So I how, think it's important to do that kind of stuff. Yeah, t talk about how important is sports in, in a community? I mean, it really develops teamwork, companionship, all those things. Well, sports and fine arts, put them, you can lump them all together. But we'll just talk about sports. But sports, it helps with many things. Curling, small town Alberta, you've got to have a curling rink. Yeah. When the curling rink goes and the post office and the school 
starts to go. Curling, curling rinks, ice hockey, all those things. It brings people a chance to meet, go, like Loman. You ever been to Loman for hockey? Best pie they make, right? <laughs> huh? Like yeah. everybody knows the small town rinks that make the best pie, <laughs> have the best foremost. They get the best burgers down there. Yeah. So they bring people as a gathering point, right? And it's yeah. awesome. And even in Lethbridge, people gather at Hurricane Games, Pronghorn Games, Triple A yeah. Midget Games. I know Les is from Calgary. He's heavily involved in the Calgary Canucks. They get the three, four hundred fans a game, and people like to come visit, hang out at the Canucks games, have a great time. And the Flames have their stuff. So communities rally around sports, and when sports, and so when a tragedy happens in sports or fine arts, yeah. it the community rallies around it. Yeah. It's not just one person. Yeah. Um, as we as we kind of wrap up our our little ride here, what are what are what are some of the key points that you'd like to bring up today? Obviously, number one, one of these, one of these things. Yeah. Well, we got to buckle up for the Broncos. I mean, Trish, Trisha Wax, Stephen Wax's mother, wrote a fantastic article in Post Media, and they put it out there. And she coined the phrase, the hashtag, hashtag buckle up for Broncos. And it's it's so important that we buckle up for Broncos, and that teams, not all the buses have it. In 2020, all new buses have to have safety belts, seat belts, and I know that. And to retrofit costs money. I get all that. But if you have a bus now, and you and you're and you're carrying kids I think it's the responsibility of the coach of that team to say hey everybody puts their, bron their buckles on for Broncos because you have to there's some teams that put themselves out on Twitter hey we're gonna go to the crash site but they don't even have their seatbelts on like it doesn't make sense right. the other teams are like going out of their way to buckle up for Broncos and you got to buckle up not for the Broncos that's just a slogan but buckle up for yourselves sure. I've ridden buses for years and I never buckle up yep. now I buckle up all the time on a bus yeah and I'm so happy when they have shoulder straps like this one here does it they're in a nice bus here last you brought a good bus down from yeah. calgary it's yeah. nice <laughs> it's a great bus and it's easy to sit in this thing and you know enjoy your ride yep uh and a, of course organ donor organ yeah. donors organ donor uh logan boule effect uh there's a big in 2009 2019 april 7th has been declared green shirt day to honor logan boule and to increase organ donor awareness and April is always Organ Donor Month in Canada, right. and so next year it's Green Shirt Day, and it's going to be awesome. And that across Canada will be green shirts, and it's not our movement. It's been moving by the Canadian Transplant Association, and the Canadian Blood Services are on board. We're now invited to Parliament Hill on April first, second, and third to be for a big presentation. The kickoff is on March March first in Lethbridge. The kickoff of the Green Shirt Day. There'll be a press conference in Lethbridge, right. and it's good. Great. Those are the, my two big points today, I guess. That's fantastic. And uh, tip your tip your bus driver. Uh, <laughs> I've never tipped our driver's bus because I go sports teams. We don't have any money. <laughs> Les knows that. Nobody has any money to tip. But we always feed them well and make yeah, sure they're taken great. care of. And uh, he always eats. And what I like with bus, okay, I'll say this part. Sure. You got a bus driver, it doesn't matter who they are. When you sit down for your meals to the bus stops, invite your driver to sit at your table. Yeah. We've always invited Les, no matter who they are, you come sit with us. They look with your what? Les does. He knows where to sit. He comes with us. Yeah. But they look at you, what? No, you sit. Oh, I'll be, no, don't, don't sit over there. Come break bread with us. Join our team. You're part of our team. Yeah. Glenn, the driver for the Broncos, was, he was a Bronco. Yeah. It's awesome. Fantastic. Toby, thank you. Thanks, Thanks for doing this. Appreciate that. Get the word out. Thank you very much. I want to thank Trax for bringing a great bus down. Les and Lonnie's behind us there, uh, Vice President of Trax, or, yeah. or Canadian Alberta Regional Manager of yep. Trax. Appreciate that there's a support. Yep. And uh, I know that they want to become part of the Buckle Up for Bronco campaign, and I'll get them pointed in the right direction. And it's serious. And Trax does a great job. And there's lots of great bus companies out there that do fantastic work all day. But Trax, that's who we got today, and we're yep. sure glad to have them. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank Thanks, you, Mark. Mark.